and I'd like to welcome you all to our travel edition of the Lunch Club, where today we'll be taking a trip to Mexico, our last stop in North America for this uh, month for now. And I hope you all enjoy. Uh, before we get started, um, has anyone visited Mexico before? Yes. Okay, where, where did you go, Anne? I've been to Mexico City, Tijuana, and uh, Cancun. Oh my goodness. I, I've never traveled outside of the United States. So that sounds oh, so fun. Yeah. yeah. That sounds so yeah. fun. Thank you so much. Oh, oh, well, anyone... it was funny how I got to Cali. Yeah. Sorry, anyone else? Um I went uh, to uh, I went to Cancun. The, uh, that's all. That's the only place I've been. Okay. Thank you for so much for sharing. And anyone else? <laughs> Well, my daughter honeymooned in, in Cancun, so. Oh, I, <laughs> I know that must, been, have been that, that must have been beautiful. <laughs> yes, she had her honeymoon there. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that. So, yes, um, you know, usually, Lou, we start off in D.C. And, uh, you know, Mexico, even, the, you know, it's a little farther than uh, Canada, as you can see, to Canada is not so far. If you want to go to Mexico, we're going to go kind of in the uh, southwest direction. Oh. Uh, you know, around Texas and such, and yeah. uh, we, we uh, get to Mexico. So this is the, the border right here, which, you know, it's just interesting to see like the border and, you know, things of that nature, see what's around there. And yeah. uh, um, just seeing the different, um, uh, you know, different places in, in Mexico. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Uh, Harold Juarez, Tijuana, Mexico City. Thank you so much for sharing that. But yeah, here we have... Uh, Let's see um, some of these places I've heard of, I haven't heard of right here. Um, it's just really interesting to uh, look at, really just going on your Maps app, that's what I'm using now, just to uh, you know look around and see what's going on. Uh, mm -hmm. this, I, I think I've heard of Victoria, Rio Grande, there, I've heard of that before. Um, let's see, down here I've heard of Guadalupe before. Mm -hmm. Puerto Vallada, you've heard uh, of that? Puerto Vallada, yeah. 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 I think I've heard of that. But that yeah, now you've heard of that. Yep, there's Mexico City. Again, make sure our TVs and cell phones are silenced. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, there's, uh, goodness, this one is so hard to pronounce. Oh, you've heard of that. Yeah. Walk yeah. Oh, yeah, Acapulco. I've heard of Acapulco. Okay, yes. Thank you yeah, so much for that. Me. And look, you see there's, Sol there's Selena Cruz. I've never heard of Selena Cruz. That looks pretty interesting, this area down right here. Um, but there's a lot uh, right here in Mexico that, uh, you know, that is there. It's so it's so big and it, it connects, you know, down here with uh, with South America. And, you know, it, it borders uh, Guatemala, Belize, Honduras, all these different places. So I think it's just really interesting just to, you know, look at these different spots. Like, you yeah, can even like you can. Yep. You can even like tap on a name. So like I tapped on Mexico City so you can see the population, the elevation, the area, the distance. And look at that. You can see the sites, the outdoors, arts and culture, different photos. You can learn about it, um, the place, different guides, the coordinates. You can even add it to your uh, favorites if you want in the Maps app. So same thing if mm -hmm. I go to I've heard of Leon, right? There's a yeah, there's a population elevation that. area. And, Again, different pictures and details and uh, um, different information. So I think it's really cool. You can use the Maps app to learn more about the places you may want to visit Guadala or just Guadala want to learn That's more. It, it yeah, so there's yep, Guadalajara sites, outdoors, mm -hmm. food and drink, different guides. Uh, so these two, I guess, celebrities, uh, you know, they have their own guides on Apple Maps. So yes, please make sure you take advantage of uh, Apple Maps so you can, again, learn more about the different places in the world. As you can see, look at that. You can literally visit anywhere in the world just with your uh, Maps app by zooming in and zooming out with your uh, with your fingers. So um, thank you all so much for that. I hope it was nice to see like the actual, uh, you know, actual Mexico and seeing how it's shaped and the different places in there. Uh, the first thing that we're gonna do today as usual, as Lou does, is uh, go over some history. So this is a, uh, a uh, quick, super quick history of Mexico. So I hope you all enjoy and learn something new. Everyone and welcome to <laughs> the 
This is North America, and here's Mexico. Now let's Mexico, shall we? The world's 13th largest nation. The area encasing the country of Mexico is among the most biodiverse on the planet, meaning there's lots and lots and lots of different animals and plants spread across its dramatically varied landscapes that range from barren desert to thick green jungle. The first settlers were hunter-gatherers who slowly tiptoed into agriculture and nestled into small farming communities. Mexico's first major civilization was that of the Olmecs, who began to make strides after after around 1500 BC. Though they remain very mysterious, it's clear theirs was an advanced culture, and they influenced practically every Mesoamerican civilization that followed them. Today, they are best known for their giant head sculptures, snarling portraits carved into boulders of basalt rock. Just who were these men whose faces of displeasure regard us with disdain? And what was the intent of these depictions of them? No one knows for certain, and the Olmec civilization disappeared around a thousand years after its rise. To their south, in the Oshaka Valley, another civilization grew. The with their capital at Monte Alban. This here is a court in which was played the Mesoamerican ball game historians have unimaginatively called the Mesoamerican ball game. To the east, in the Yucatan Peninsula, a remarkable civilization surfaced called the Maya. The Maya, whose golden era spanned the years from 250 to 900 AD, were exceptionally clever, developing a written script and sophisticated calendar, as well as being accomplished builders, mathematicians, and astronomers. Though the Maya were spread over Belize, Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras, one of their most spectacular cities was in Mexico, Chichen Itza. This temple was dedicated to the worship of the feathered snake god, Gukulkan. The Maya also practiced human sacrifice. This man over here has been decapitated, and this fellow holds his severed head. War was also a common thing, and it might have been a factor in the puzzling Maya collapse, but no one really knows. For some reason, from the 9th century onward, the Maya abandoned their cities, and their civilization ended. Meanwhile, over in Mexico's midsection stands another riddle, a very big one. The city of Teotihuacan, founded around 100 BC, and prospering for centuries, no one's sure who its inhabitants were, or whether or not this was the capital of an empire. This gargantuan structure is called the Pyramid of the Sun, and this is the Pyramid of the Moon. The city was abandoned after being burned around the 6th century, and central Mexico subsequently fell to the more militant Toltecs, who made their capital at Tula. Toltec queen Xochitl is said to have formed a regiment of female soldiers, and herself died in battle. The next great regional civilization was even more warlike, the Aztecs, who rose to power in the 14th century. The Aztecs referred to themselves as Mexica, which should sound familiar, and built a grand capital on Lake Tetzicoco, called Tenochtitlan. The chief Aztec deity was Huitzilopochtli, the god of war. The Aztecs believed he needed continuous offerings of blood to ensure the survival of the sun. To this end, the Aztecs incessantly attacked surrounding peoples for prisoners to sacrifice. These unlucky captives would be uncomfortably laid on a small altar before a priest with an obsidian blade cut out their hearts. Certainly nothing half-hearted about that religion. And then the Aztec Empire in the midst of its glories, was suddenly and unexpectedly dismantled in only two years. How? This place. The Spanish had sailed to the Americas in the late 1400s and promptly set about conquering the Caribbean. In 1519, an exploratory mission arrived in Mexico under the command of conquistador Hernán Cortés. The natives were astonished at the sight of these white-faced men in their shiny armor, seated upon monstrous beasts called horses, which they had never seen before. With the help of the indigenous woman La Malinche as interpreter, Cortés could more ably facilitate his conquest. The Aztecs, then under the rule of Motexoma II, were not well loved by their neighbors, who saw in the Spaniards a chance to decisively destroy their enemy. The nation of Tlaxcala allied with Cortes and accompanied him to Tenochtitlan. The Spaniards were initially welcomed, but as the days passed, suspicions began bubbling and tensions boiled and, fearing rebellion, the Spanish slaughtered a bunch of Aztec nobles and priests, which didn't help at all, and the Spaniards, running low on provisions and surrounded by a huge city that hated them, opted to sneak away at night but were spotted and attacked and driven out. The next year, however, Cortes had received reinforcements and made new alliances and marched on the Aztec capital. Though the Aztecs and their eagle warriors fought bravely, everything was now against them. They were weakened by introduced smallpox, and ultimately, their paddle-shaped clubs with bits of rock sticking out were no match for guns and steel. The Aztec Empire was defeated, and the once proud land of the plumed serpent fell to the gold-hungry forces of Spain. In 1524, a group of Franciscan priests arrived on the eastern coast and walked barefoot for 200 miles to the capital, eager to share the suffering of the indigenous people. The Franciscans worked tirelessly over the years to convert the native Mexicans to Christianity, which worked, and that religion is the majority faith of the country today. Meanwhile, the huge changes sweeping over the land continued. Mexico was titled New Spain, and the office of Viceroy was created to govern it in place of the king, who was all the way across the Atlantic in Europe. The first Viceroy was Antonio de Mendoza, a wise and prudent administrator who helped stabilize 
stabilize and improve the colony. Not so nice was Conquistador Nuno de Guzman, whose campaigns of butchery and enslavement caused the indigenous people unfathomable misery until he was arrested and packed off back to Spain. The years passed and the Spanish established cities and silver mines and crushed rebellions and steadily conquered more and more land. Spanish settlers intermarrying with natives resulted in ethnically mixed or mestizo people who over time ended up becoming the country's ethnic majority. Though thousands of miles away, the continent of Europe continued to influence Mexico, be it in Baroque architecture or in the provocative ideas of the Enlightenment, which questioned and criticized the old traditional ways. A momentous change occurred after Napoleon invaded and occupied Spain in the early 1800s, causing Spain's colonies to seek independence. Mexico's struggle for freedom began in 1810 when the priest Miguel Hidalgo y Costilla rang the bell of his church and called for revolt. Eleven years of fire, death and passion until General Agustin de Turbide led the Mexicans to victory. In 1824, Mexico received its first president, Guadalupe Victoria, and in the decades that followed, the young state withstood civil unrest, territorial change, and the endless squabbling between liberals and conservatives. In this troubled time, one man towered above his peers as the most remarkable figure of his day, General Santa Ana. He had successfully led the Mexicans in 1829's Battle of Tampico, ending once and for all Spain's attempt to reconquer the country. He lost a leg in a war with France, married twice, both times for money, and didn't even bother to attend his own weddings, and became president <laughs> 11 times, three what? times in a single year at one point. Now Mexico was a lot bigger in the 19th century than it is now. But then, Texas. Conquered by Spain in 1690, Texas was a troublesome, titan-sized slab of earth, thinly populated and subject to raids by hostile bands of Comanches. The 1820s saw Anglo-American immigration into Texas from the neighboring USA, and there was soon political disagreements between the new arrivals, called Texians, and the Mexican government. And I'll give you three options of what you might think happened next. A. War. B. War. And C. War. If you said A or B, you're wrong. The answer is in fact C. War. <laughs> Why C? It just is C. General Jose Orea triumphed in the Goliad campaign, taking over 400 Texians prisoner, whom Santa Ana ordered to be executed. More famous is the Battle of the Alamo, where the besieged, heavily outnumbered Texians were defeated by Santa Ana. The Texians were outraged and struck back under Sam Houston, winning the Battle of San Jacinto in less than 20 minutes and taking Santa Ana prisoner. Mexico thus lost a huge chunk of land, but more followed with the Mexican-American War of the 1840s, where the USA conquered much more land from Mexico, including California, where gold was soon discovered. After Santa Ana was overthrown in 1855, the liberals gained power and set about drafting reforms to get things going better for unhappy Mexico. These reforms involved stripping the church of much of its power, which angered conservatives, and I'll give you three choices for what followed. A. Civil War. B. Civil War. And C. Civil War. The answer is in fact D. Civil War. Why D? Because it's de truth. Benito Pablo Juarez Garcia, of indigenous Zapotec heritage, became president in 1858, pushing for separation of church and state. And after the Reform War and a crazy French invasion supported by conservatives, the liberals won the struggle to run the nation. The next big man to appear on Mexico's stage was Porfirio Diaz, who served as president for over 30 years and promoted secularism and modernization, and much needed wealth poured in from European and US investments. However, for the average Mexican worker, things were not improved, and labor conditions were poor, and Diaz was jailing presidential rivals. Trouble, storm-like, was brewing, and I'll give you three options of, ah, oh, forget it. The Mexican Revolution is what happened. Peasant forces led by Emiliano Zapata were victorious against government troops, as was fellow mustachioed revolutionary Pancho Villa. And while both men ended up assassinated, the revolution itself succeeded in 1920, and under a new constitution, Alvaro Obregón became president. And then he too was assassinated. From the 1940s oh, wow. till 1970, Mexico experienced economic growth, though the wealth gap between rich and poor widened, and there were years of conflict between left-wing guerrilla fighters and the government. More bad times followed, and then more bad times followed that. Meanwhile, crime rates ballooned, and we witnessed the ugly rise of the cartels, criminal gangs specializing in drug trafficking. In 2006, the government initiated a war on drugs, which hasn't really helped at all, and thousands have been killed. Not good. But in spite of all this stuff, Mexico today has attained a high level of human development, and currently possesses the world's 15th largest economy, and is one of the world's top tourist destinations. And Mexico has given the world so much, be it in the world of art, or in cinema, or literature, or in music, or in sports, or, no surprises here, food! Mm -mm. <laughs> what awaits Mexico in the years ahead? Comment below, but for now, bye bye Yeah, so that was a video on a history of Mexico. Um, that was very interesting. I particularly like the portion where they showed the 
um, U.S. taking some of the land back from um, Mexico and just seeing how those changes occurred in their geography and uh, the, um, the war with uh, Texas, um, I uh, was not fully aware of. So that was just very uh, informational and very interesting. Um, so, you know, uh, I think uh, I would love if you all could unmute and maybe share your thoughts. You all have any thoughts in the video, anything that uh, stood out? You can uh, unmute yourself and share if you would like. I, I just wasn't really aware of the Alamo was uh, was between the Mexicans and the Texans. Uh, I, I guess I kind of skipped over some of that <laughs> when, we, when we learned that in class, but um, I do know that the Mexicans would, well, I do remember that they were involved in it, but I didn't remember how involved they were. In it. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, California, I, I knew that we took back that California. So. Yeah, where, where in the video they said they ended up finding gold. So I guess it yes. was, uh, <laughs> that was, uh, I, I remember the, the gold rush and the history mm -hmm. regarding that. So that was uh, interesting to uh, learn about. So thank you so much for sharing. Anyone else would like to share their thoughts on Mexico, on this video, anything that stood out to them? Uh, Vicente Guerrero, second Mexican president and its slavery, then Texas happened. Oh, thank you so much for the picture, Mr. Harold. That's really cool. Hey, uh, yep. Um, Geraldine, I think, unmuted um, first. And then yeah. uh, Mr. Harold, uh-huh. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, the, the Spaniards, uh, came over and took over and it said that they along with the um, indigenous population mm -hmm. uh, formed the, the people that we know today as the Mexicans. No, because, you know, I didn't know, I, 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 I figured that the Spaniards came over, but I didn't know who they uh, associated with to get the Mexicans that we, get, we see today. Mm -hmm. So it was the indigenous population and the Spaniards. That, yes. get, that yeah so that was interesting to me because i didn't know how they came to be how the mexicans came to be the ones we mm. know today thank you so much for sharing me too gerilyn I, I never really thought about it so this video was uh very eye-opening <laughs> yeah uh -huh. thank you uh mr harrod you had something to share uh yeah the mexicans a uh, very very diverse group of people mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. mixed a lot of different uh, cultures and uh, ethnicities. But uh, one thing that, uh, that I want to share with you, Vicente Guerrero, the second mm -hmm. president of Mexico. And it's a little uh, controversy about his heritage, but uh, he was uh, supposedly indigenous, African, Spaniard, and he outlawed or helped to get slavery outlawed in Mexico mm -hmm. of course once and one of the reasons they did that was to keep the white Americans from keep coming down to the, to the area because they wanted to bring uh slavery oh and wow so yes if we, if we outlaw slavery then they won't come mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so part of taking Texas the whole war was to put slavery in that part of the country mm. And that's what the United States wanted to do. So that's how they ended up taking Texas, actually. And of course, you probably didn't get that one in, in history, Diane. <laughs> but uh, there's a lot of things we don't get in history. I just oh, wanted to share that. Oh, yes. No, thank, thank you so much for that. It was uh, just, you know, it, it, it makes memories come back and just history and just kind of put the pieces together. So thank you so much for sharing that. I really appreciate that, Mr. Harold. And then uh, I think we'll move on to our video after you hear from uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Dolores. Did you want to share something real quick about the video? Oh, yes. Um, where so many of the um, presidents were assassinated in order for them to bring um, the drug cartel in 2006. But it was just a lot of assassination of the um, president since the 1824 president when they first yeah. started. It, yeah, was, it was a lot. It was, woo. Mm. yeah, it was a lot. It, 
it just makes you think the people that are there now, you know, for a lot of them, they, they, they're still here today through, uh, you know, sheer perseverance and through, uh, you know, you got to do what you got to do. So the people that are living there now, you know, they have a rich history. And as you can see, they went through a lot. So it's, uh, you know, just it's it, it makes you really think about people whenever we visit these different countries on what they've gone through and how, you know, they're still here today. So yes. I really uh, appreciate that. And yes, it's so uh, hopefully, you know, just things get better in that regard, hopefully, you know. <laughs> but uh, thank you so thank much for you. sharing, uh, Ms. Dolores. I really appreciate that. And uh, again, you all don't have to raise your hand yet. You all can just, uh, you know, unmute yourselves if you'd like, you know, after you watch the videos, just don't forget to uh, meet yourself after you shared. But thank you all so much for watching so far. Again, we have some uh, a, a couple of videos for you all. So you deserve Cottonelle softest ever ripples a, for a comfortable facts video on Mexico. So again, I hope you all enjoy and learn something new about oh, Mexico. Clean. So just some fun facts. Saving on your education should be a right, not a competition. At University of Phoenix, you'll get. Ancient ruins dazzling beaches, and incredible cuisine. Just a few things that come to mind when thinking about Mexico. Officially, the United Mexican States, commonly known as Mexico, is the 10th most populated country in the world with around 129 million people. Bordered famously with the USA to the north, despite attempts to build that wall, and with Guatemala and Belize to the south, Mexico has the Pacific Ocean to the west and the Gulf of Mexico or Caribbean Sea to the east. Due to its location just below the USA, most people mistake Mexico as being part of South America. But it is actually in North America and is also the world's 13th largest country. Mexico City is the capital and also the largest and most populated city, with a rich history and culture that dates back thousands of years. Mexico is a land of extremes with its geographical qualities, diverse economy, and the gap between rich and poor. High mountains and deep canyons dominate central Mexico with rainforests to the south and east and deserts to the north. Mexico is rich in natural resources, such as oil, silver, and copper, but the economy is mostly held up by the financial sector and tourism. While the long-standing stereotype of all Mexicans being local farmers stands, agriculture accounts for only 4% of the economy. Times are changing, and Mexico is rolling with them, realizing the importance of finance tourism, and technology to boost the economy. Ironically, Mexican cuisine is much loved in the U.S. and all over the world. Tacos are a given in every household on Tuesdays, and burritos, tortillas, tamales, enchiladas, and quesadillas fill up the menu nicely. Don't forget that side of guacamole, too. It's no secret that Mexican citizens make up the largest proportion of the United States' foreign-born population. Interestingly, U.S. citizens, on the other hand, constitute the largest immigrant group in Mexico. Want to get away? I think so. Mexico's history is rich, with the Mayans settling there first, before the Aztec Empire based itself in the southern area during the 1300s, building some of the famous pyramids and temples we can see around the area today. The Aztecs were overthrown by the Spanish in 1521, who then reigned for another 300 years, until Mexico fought for and gained independence in the early 19th century. Chichen Itza, a sacred city of temples and pyramids, is one of the most famous tourist spots in the country today. Located on the Yucatan Peninsula, or East Mexico, it is one of the most visited archaeological sites in the world, with Kukukan Pyramid dominating the site's center. 
declared a world heritage by UNESCO in 1988 and listed as one of the new seven wonders of the world since 2007. In fact, Mexico has 35 sites on the World Heritage List, so it is definitely a country worth visiting. Cinco de Mayo, celebrated annually on May 5th, is not actually Mexico's Independence Day, but the anniversary of the victory against Imperial France at the Battle of Puebla in 1862. Nowadays, it is viewed more as a time to honor Mexican culture and heritage. Meanwhile, Independence Day is observed on September 16th every year with street parties, fireworks, music, and a taco or two. Arriba, arriba, andale. See you next time. Adios. Wow, that was such a really fast and really interesting uh, video on some fun facts, a little bit of history. Um, as, again, uh, more about their food and their culture. Um, wow. Any thoughts on your favorite fun fact from the video? You can now uh, unmute yourself and share. We'd love to hear from you. And what is your favorite fun fact from the uh, from the video? Any thoughts? Um, I like the one about uh, Cinco de Mayo. You know, it's not actually their independence, but their victory at the Battle of Puebla. That was very interesting to me. So uh, I always have to remember that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Mr. Harrow, for sharing that. I appreciate that. Thank you. Anyone else would like to uh, unmute and uh, share their thoughts on this video? I just like Mexican foods. Oh, <laughs> mm -hmm. oh yes. All, yeah. all the foods that they listed, I've had mm -hmm. before at least once, and it's so, so good. Especially, you know, if you like, um, if you like, you know, rice and... Uh, uh, some of those common foods there, you really like Mexican and that kind of Chicken enchiladas, beef enchiladas. <laughs> yeah, well, th again, thank you so much for sharing that, Anne. I really appreciate that. Um, our next video today is um, learning Mexico more extends about their traditions and customs and culture. It's so important to, you know, try to look at different parts of the country to really understand um, their people and their practices. So, Again, I hope you learned something new about Mexica Mexico's traditions and customs. Beyond its borders, Vincente Fox. Mexico is a rich country filled with mystery, danger, and lots of fun. Would you like to discover what makes this country unique in the world? Here is our list of the most popular Mexican traditions. Number seven, quinceañeras. A quinceañera is a celebration of a girl's 15th birthday. It has its cultural roots in Mexico and is widely celebrated by girls throughout Latin America. The girl celebrating her 15th birthday is a quinceañera. This birthday is celebrated differently from any other as it marks the transition from childhood to young womanhood. Historically, the Mexican fiesta of quinceañera is thought to have primarily evolved from the customs of the indigenous Aztec and Mayan groups. Well before the arrival of the Spanish, these ancient cultures would separate young girls from their male peers to provide them with a specialized education in order to prepare them for the responsibilities of womanhood. Nowadays, Spanish influence saw the event evolve to include a trip to the Catholic Church for Mass. La Quinceañera would traditionally wear a white wedding-like gown, although she's often allowed to choose her color herself these days, which unsurprisingly tends to be pink. Friends and family are expected to don their best formal attire. Number six, siestas. Siestas are one of the best known Mexican traditions, a short nap taken early in the afternoon. Most closely associated with Spanish culture, the siesta takes place in the afternoon. The exact time of day varies depending on the location, but the most common siesta time is between 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. Siestas generally follow the midday meal and are common in warm environments. Technically, Mexico abolished the siesta in 1944, but unofficially, those who can still do. 
Following lunch, lucky workers get to take a break to go home for a brief rest before getting back into the swing of things. Number five, bullfighting. Since bullfighting is the national sport of Mexico, it plays a large role in Mexican history. Bullfights are still legal in Mexico and a few other countries. The most common place to watch a bullfight in Mexico is its capital city, home to the world's largest bull ring, Plaza Mexico. Nevertheless, there has been a strong push to ban these types of events within the country because of animal cruelty. In fact, Mexico is the first country in North America to ban cosmetic animal testing. Number four, piñatas. The piñata is a paper structure made to hold candy, small toys, and other goods. Typically in the shape of an animal or kid's character, piñatas are hung from high spaces during a celebration or fiesta. Once hung, children are blindfolded and encouraged to swing at the piñata with a bat. Because of their popularity in U.S. culture as well, piñatas are one of the most commonly known and exciting Mexican traditions. The Mexican Catholic interpretation of the piñata rested on the struggle of man against temptation. The seven points represent the seven deadly sins. The pot represents evil and the seasonal fruit and candy inside the temptations of evil. The person with the stick is blindfolded to represent faith. Number three, Las Posadas. For many Mexicans, the word posadas evokes chilly nights surrounded by family and friends, singing, enjoying a warm meal, and spreading holiday cheer all around. The word posada means inn or lodging, and traditionally posadas are a celebration of the Christmas story. They take place on nine nights from December 16th to 24th and commemorate the Virgin Mary and St. Joseph's search for a place to stay where Jesus could be born. Posadas in Mexico feature hot food and drinks, sweets, music, and piñatas. Number 2. Cinco de Mayo Cinco de Mayo is one of the most important dates in Mexican culture. The celebrations on Cinco de Mayo are meant to commemorate Mexico's victory over France in 1862. Traditions include military parades, recreations of the Battle of Puebla, and other festive events. For many Mexicans, however, May 5th is a day like any other. It is not a federal holiday, so offices, banks, and stores remain open. Before we continue, don't forget to click on the subscribe button so you won't miss any of our videos. Our number one, Dia de los Muertos. Dia de los Muertos, or Day of the Dead, is a two-day holiday held in Mexico. Meant to honor deceased friends and family, according to this tradition, this is a Mexican holiday where families welcome back the souls of their deceased relatives for a brief reunion. Dia de los Muertos takes place November 1st and 2nd. While American Halloween traditions are spooky and dark, Dia de los Muertos is a celebratory event involving cooking, bright colors, all-night vigils on the graves of loved ones, and dancing. We have arrived to the end of our video. Perhaps you would like to share some... So again, those are some of Mexico's most popular traditions and customs. Um, I learned about uh, Las Posada. Um, I never really heard of that before, so I learned that. And it was uh, quite interesting to see their different traditions, but I noticed there was a lot about food and being together with your family and your loved ones and lots of food. And uh, I really like that. Anyone has anyone to uh, anything to share about the video? Again, maybe your favorite tradition or custom that they do? Uh, you can uh, unmute yourself if you'd like and share your thoughts. But that was quite interesting. I like how the uh, video kind of divided these different traditions and uh, customs. And anyone would like to share? The, the uh, uh, celebration of the 15-year-old, uh, I was um, invited to one because um, mm -hmm. a lady worked with my mother. Um, back in the day from at GSA and she invited mommy and I to her daughter's 15th uh, party and it was uh, it was very interesting 
<laughs> yeah, it was wow. very, very interesting. In fact, that was when I had my first formal. Oh, <laughs> so oh my gosh! I've yeah, never been so, to a quinceanera before, so that sounds it, like a lot of fun. I I didn't say it because I didn't like messing it up, quinceaneras. Uh, oh. <laughs> but it 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 was it was really interesting, and um, uh, there was a I I was unfortunately when I had a flood in my house, I lost a lot of those pictures because I would have loved oh. it. But um, it was a, it was just a very it, to me it was a, like a a big surprise party. Uh, you didn't know what you oh yeah <laughs> in there. You didn't know what to expect, and um, it was a lot of dancing and and mm -hmm. uh, you know and the young lady. It was like a coming like a sweet sixteen party we have here or yeah yeah <laughs> being presented. Um, uh, like at the sororities and stuff, yeah, pre presentation. Oh, yeah. yeah, so it was kind of like that. It was very <laughs> interesting. Oh, well, again, thank you so much for sharing. And I, I like that was your, your favorite uh, tradition. So thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Uh, our next video for today, again, thank you all so much for During watching, first... um, is all about food. So we're going to look, look for uh, food in uh, Mexico. So we're going to be in um, again, this this city, Huaca, I, you know, if, if that's how you say it, but uh, I really look forward life. to this she video. Suffered with a... I hope you all do as well. Sobres. ¿Salió? ¿Qué es esto? ¿Este pan aquí es una marca? Ok. Ah, tú lo usas, es chido. Ah, cool. ¿Es un programa? Sí, es un programa. Vamos a dar un tour de Oaxaca. Oaxaca, ok. Got my Great. first, uh, my first <laughs> local marca, local street tag marca, Panda Bear. <laughs> I'm Daniel Hernandez, editor of Vice Mexico, and we're here in Oaxaca City, Oaxaca, the capital of one of the richest, most culturally diverse, most complex states in all of Mexico. We're in the Central Valley right now. It's rather dry, it's very high, the sunlight is amazing, but Oaxaca also has mountain ranges, it has really hot tropical zones, and Southern Pacific coast with incredible surfing and food. What we're gonna do is try all the different varieties of food that we possibly can, and of course, a lot of mezcal. The market is really the best place to get to know a community. It's the crossroads of a community. And it's also where all the different textures and flavors of a certain culture come together. We're here at the 20 de Noviembre Market, just a few blocks from the Zócalo Main Square in Oaxaca City, and we're about to have breakfast and see what else they have to offer. Oh, I see, conozco aquí. Damn, these look good. I don't know what they are, but they look good. Este es el que pica más, porque está tan pequeño. This one must be lethal. I'm going to take his word for it. Not try it before breakfast. <laughs> Damn, listen to that. Uh, she's preparing tejate, which is a combination of maize and cacao. And it's bubbly, it's frothy, and I dream about it at night when I'm not here. <laughs> but right now it's an emotive preparation. So this is agua de chila cayote. So this has piloncillo, which is a kind of hardened um, sugar candy, pineapple, and lemon rinds. Mm. Now let's get something to eat. These are kind of um, partnered or, or dual stands, where basically you get the meat, and it goes directly onto the grill, and then you get a uh, chile and some cebollas, some onions, Ooh. and then at the end someone comes and sells you tortillas, and basically you have like a taco or a tlayuda set and ready to go. This system is pretty magical. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> It 
it was only noon, but after all that time in the market, I think I needed to make a little pit stop. So we checked out an old school cantina called El Chato. <laughs> the spe- a Tim Dindo pours to Amigo. <laughs> Uh, watch for your friends. I'm, I'm not sure, <laughs> but that's so cool. Just to see tea is suero, and this is also known as a michelada or a chelada in other parts of Mexico. Pues me encantaría un suerito. Un suerito. Se lo preparamos inmediatamente. Para preparar un suero depende de los tantos que se le den. Por ejemplo, lleva sal, lleva limón. El chiste no pasarse. Tiene que ser la medida exacta. Que no, que no le falte ni le sobre. Great for the hangover, great for the mid-afternoon blues, I guess. Cheers. Let's do this. Itanoni. I've heard a lot about this place. Itanoni is a restaurant where the cuisine is based primarily on maíz or corn and is actually a mixtec word and it means corn flour. In recent years, there is an interest in different ways to interpret maíz. So let's check it out. Lo que trabajamos aquí básicamente son los maíces que producen los campesinos en sus comunidades para ellos comer. O sea, el maíz es un infinito de sabores. ¿Por mm. qué? Porque el maíz que produce cada familia va cambiando de manera permanente. ¿no? Te vamos a ofrecer un atole. Del atole se... Warm corn drink. <risa> wow. Pueden hacer champurrados, que se le pone chocolate y canela. Pero la base sería el atole blanco. ¿no? Pruébalo, por favor. O sea, ese sería el sabor puro de, de la tole de ese maíz. Pero si yo cambio de maíz, cambia de sabor. You know, I always thought corn was corn. Ever since NAFTA, for about 20 years, there is more and more corn being imported to Mexico, and much of it is genetically modified. But at Itanoni, I learned that there are so many different varieties of maíz. The varieties depend on geography and on methods of cultivation, and there are also so many different ways to enjoy it. This drink, Tascalate, is a combination of ground maíz, once again, ground corn, ground cacao, which is the base of chocolate, also native to Mexico, um, cinnamon, and achiote, which is a seed that is uh, also ground and thrown in to add color. And it goes down kind of uh, very distinctly uh, <laughs> in, in your mouth and, and down the throat. Um, it's great. Queremos vivir en la ciudad, pues sí hay que pagar algunos costos. ¿no? Es como decirte, qué rico es el caviar, ¿cómo podríamos comer todo el mundo caviar? Pues no, no se puede, ¿no? Porque no habría suficiente, pues. No quiere decir que no sepas a qué sabe, ¿no? Y cómo se podría comer. ¿no? Y me, me sorprende mucho que no te identificas como alguien de la cocina. Pues no, porque este, si te fijas, la cocina del maíz es una cocina muy simple, ¿no? Debería lucirse el maíz, no el chef. ¿no? <risa> Hats off to you, sir, literally. <laughs> Hats off. Excellent. No entendí, pero te saludo. <laughs> so our uh, local guide here, uh, Gobert, decided to take us around on the back of his truck. <laughs> oh my goodness. Real Mexa style. <laughs> Don't know what time it is, but the night is still young, I presume. So let's see what comes next. Let's do it. Sí, yo me acuerdo de este lugar. Acá es lo típico de Oaxaca, las clayudas muy famosas aquí en Oaxaca. No son ni duras ni blandas. Y acá se preparan con un poco de, de asiento, frijol, lechuga, cebolla, queso o quesillo. Y se acompaña también con un pedazo de tazajo o cecina o chorizo. Ahorita se, de, se deleita con lo típico de acá de Oaxaca. Esperemos que les guste. 18, 18 levels of uh, crunchy right here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you really couldn't ask for a better, healthier 
more affordable dinner, I think, in Oaxaca City tonight with this. It was time to sample the cutting edge of contemporary Oaxacan cuisine. Uh, right now we're going to Casa Oaxaca. Casa Oaxaca started out as just a couple of chairs for service, and then it kind of just gradually became known as a standard setter in Oaxacan food. The chef, Alejandro Ruiz, uses traditional methods and, and recipes, but he just knocks it up a notch. De tener una serie de microclimas, por lo cual nos da una inmensa variedad de ingredientes. Todos tenemos una abuela, una mamá, una tía que cocina impresionantemente. Pues el paladar lo traemos aquí. ¿Y qué, qué vamos a probar ahorita? Nos van a preparar una salsa de molcajete. Y nada, esto es para abrir boca. La vamos a acompañar con una tostada de maíz azul, con la mano, como tiene que ser. Son unos camarones eh, con una hierbita que se llama pitiona. Aceite de oliva y, y, y un poquito de ajo, ¿no? Gracias. Tenemos una hoja santa. Hoja santa is an aromatic herb and it grows mostly in tropical Mesoamerica. And hoja santa actually means sacred leaf in Spanish. Mm. Es blanqueada, luego rellena con chapulines, con quesillo, con pasta de frijol. Grasshoppers. La enrollamos, la freímos un poquito. Queso fresco, crema. Ese es un rábano, cilantro y cebolla. Oh. Ok. <laughs> es una tlayuda simple. La doblas y la pones al carbón. Tlayuda. Yes. This is the fancier version of the tlayuda we had on the street before. Finger food. Hand to mouth. Wow. Creo que esta es la mejor tlayuda que que he probado. It's amazing that everything on this table is Oaxacan directly. Mm. Um, there's like a total commitment to uh, making a fully Oaxacan kitchen happen before your eyes with Chef Alejandro Ruiz. Chef, thank you so much for, for having us today. Thank it you has very been much. Uh, wonderful, magnificent. Never gonna forget this. Can't wait till I come back for more. Any last thoughts before our trivia for today on this video? Um, it was so cool to see the streets and how he like, you know, his transportation, how he moved around and the different foods and just how, you know, he said like, everyone's mom knows how to cook great. So that's why we're great cooks. That was, <laughs> I mean, uh, the proof is in the pudding that that, that uh, food look amazing. So any thoughts on this video before we move on to our trivia? I was down with everything with the shrimp except the grasshoppers. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness, I, I, wasn't that I, I don't think I want to eat grasshoppers. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't even like the way they look <laughs> hopping around, so I don't want to eat that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but it, hey, it's uh, every every culture has something different. So I know that is definitely uh well a standout um as well. So Thank you so much for uh, sharing, Anne. Really appreciate it. Any other thoughts? Uh, while I get this trivia up, give me one second. Again, thank you all so much for uh, participating today. I really appreciate that. And uh, we are just going to make sure that we have everything together. Give me one moment. Appreciate it. But again, let's make sure we have our thinking caps on for our trivia. Again, um, you must raise your hand in Zoom if you would like to share your answer uh, to a question. So again, um, before we get started, I want everyone in Zoom to please raise their hand. You can tap more at the top right, and then you can tap raise hand. So especially if you have any newcomers on, make sure again that you know how to raise your hand in Zoom. You tap more at the top right. And then you tap on Zoom in order to be uh, to be called on. You must have the answer 
once you're called on if you want to get that answer correct, okay? Thank you so much. Just making sure we're set up for our wheel. I appreciate that. I see about eight hands, but again, if you'd like to answer one of the trivia questions for today, please raise your hand in Zoom. You all can hit lower at the bottom to lower your hand. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Again, you must raise your hand if you would like to share your answer to these questions. Again, provided by Lou. So again, thanks to Lou for providing the trivia questions for today. And uh, again, I hope you all learn something new and get these uh, questions. We are, uh, you all do such a good job of, uh, and know so many things. So uh, again, we'll see who wins an iPad uh, accessory for today. So uh, first up, our first question is, what are the two main symbols in the center of the Mexican flag and what do they each represent? So again, Google is your friend, use your iPads, use your resources to find the answer. Again, please raise your hand. We'll take the, uh, again, first full correct answer. Okay, so again, you must have both symbols and you must state what they each represent. Okay, uh, Brenda, what is your answer? Okay, um, the golden eagle and the snake. The eagle represents bravery, strength, and the indomitable spirit of the Mexican people while the snake symbolizes their ancient foes and constant struggle against adversity. Is that right? <laughs> okay, that is, um, that is kind of what we have. I'm going to take another answer okay. and see All who's right. closer, but you're, yes, I will take another answer for that, but uh, just uh, keep your hand up, okay, Brenda? Okay, um, Anne, what do you say? What is your answer? I was getting ready to throw a man because it said basically the snake was the symbolizes earth and ancient enemies of Mexico. And the um, eagle symbolizes strength, bravery, and the uh, dominant spirit of the Mexican people in the ancient Aztec culture. So basically what Brenda said. Okay. Thank you so much, Anne and, and Brenda, for sharing. So, you know, your answers are very, very similar. So I think what we can do in this situation is uh, here's the answer, and we're going to provide it to uh, both of you, okay? So it says the legend, uh, again, I'm just going based off the PowerPoint, so I'm uh, just reading what it said. Legend of the Eagle and the Cactus of the uh, Mexica Empire, which tells us how Tenochtitlan, present-day Mexico City, was founded. The fable relates the path that the citizens of Aztlan had to walk until they found the eagle, the reincarnation of the god, um, hits with whatever that says, <laughs> devouring a snake perched on a cactus. So again, the answer is quite specific, but you all pretty much got it on the nose. So I will uh, give it to uh, both of you. So both of you are only running for a prize today, Miss Anne and Miss Brenda. So thank you so much for uh answering. I appreciate that. We have some more questions for you all. So again, please raise your hands if you'd like to share a response. And if you answer it correctly, you are in the running for a prize today. Um, what animal is this that you see here pictured on the screen? It was mentioned in the videos as well. So what animal is this? Got to be specific. Okay. <laughs> in a way, got to be specific. Uh, do Ms. Doris, what is your answer? I'm going to say an eagle. Okay. Um, again, I need a little more specific answer. Um, what an is this that you see on the screen? So you're, you're not wrong. It is an eagle, but we need, again, the, the, again, the kind, okay? Is it a golden eagle? So uh, I'm, I'm going to give that to you, Ms. Doris. Thank you so much. The Golden Eagle is Mexico's national bird. So again, thank you so much for answering. I appreciate that, Ms. Doris. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next question is, what famous video electronics device was invented in Mexico? 
Again, what famous video electronics device was invented in Mexico? Please raise your hand if you would like to answer. We, uh, one hint is we talked about this device in one of our uh, advanced trainings. So that's the hint I'm gonna give you. We talked about this device, how it came to be. It was also one of our highlight of the days not too long ago. So uh, Mr. Harold, what is your answer? I'm gonna guess, Alex, the Walkman. Okay, again, thank you for trying, but uh, that's that's not it. But we'll, <laughs> we'll see if anyone gets to it. But thank you so much, Mr. Harold. Any other takers for this question? What famous video electronics device was invented in Mexico? I'm gonna give you a hint, another hint. This happened, this occurred in the 60s. So again, just the, um, I guess you can call it the basic name for this uh, um, device. Again, it, it occurred in the 60s, invented in Mexico. And thank you, Anne, keep your hand up. You already had, you know, in the running for a prize, but please keep your hand up. See if any other taker is any other takers, please raise your hand. Okay, just for fun. Uh, and what do you say? What is what is the answer? Color television. Ding, ding, ding. Color TV <laughs> was invented in Mexico. Yes, it's true. In 1963, the engineer Guillermo Gonzalez Camarera saw his invention technically called the trichromatic sequential field system change television forever. So good job, well, Anne. You, you, you gave me that hint when you said we had learned about it and then it, it dawned on me that we had talked about color television one time. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> good. I really, wow, that's amazing. Thank you so much, Anne. Again, um, you know, uh, you already got an answer right, but I see that you, uh, I really appreciate your participation. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have, I think, two more. I think we have two more, two more questions for today because we're almost, uh, we're almost there. So, what famous sweet food did Mexico bring to the world? It was mentioned in the video, you know, about food. But again, what famous sweet food did Mexico bring to the world? Please raise your hand if you would like to answer. Again, it was mentioned in the video. And it's very famous. <laughs> um, any takers? Okay, Gerilyn was first. Again, what I'm is your guess. answer? I'm just guessing this. I'm just, this is a guess. Okay. Chocolate, chocolate. Bing, 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 chocolate to the West. Yeah. Good job, Gerilyn. When okay. you're talking fun facts about Mexico, you have to mention the food. And while we love the dishes you get in the country, one of its most famous experts is now beloved all over the globe, chocolate. So good job, Gerilyn. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Good job. Uh, one more question for the group. So again, your last chance to be in the running for a prize today. What is this dish? My hint for this one, it is two words, okay? You must get to that whole phrase in order to get it correct. And what is this dish? And, oh, there's one after this, sorry about that, you all. One after this one, but again, what is the name of this dish? This is um, another hint, the be this is the best known of all of the varieties of this. So it's the best known out of all the varieties of the dish. Any takers? Okay, again, Ms. Doris, thank you for keep your hand up. Appreciate that. See if we can get anyone else that hasn't answered yet. And again, thank you so much for participating. Keep your hand up. Any other takers for this question? Okay, um, Yvonne, what do you say? Again, it's a two-word um, answer. I'm thinking it's the 
churros, which is the Mexican donut. Okay. No, uh, unfortunately, that's not it, Yvonne, but it's a good try. Thanks so much. Okay. Appreciate that. Um, and, uh, okay, again, just in the interest of time. Um, George, just for, again, for fun, what do you, what do you say? Uh, Mexican Kassan, Kassan. Um, No, that's not what we have. But again, thank you so much. Uh, again, just for participating and trying. I appreciate that. And then uh, again, uh, well, let's see, Mr. Harold, what do, what do you say? What is your answer? Mo Poblano. Ding, 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 ding. Mole Poblano. Good job, Mr. Harold. This is perhaps the best known of all mole varieties, an ancient dish native to the state of Puebla. It has been called the national dish of Mexico and ranked first as the most typical of Mexican dishes. Good job, Mr. Harold. Thank you so much for... Uh, participating. I appreciate that. And our last, this is our last one. Again, lot, I love these different questions. Again, you got to thank Lou next time you see him for these. I uh, love how interesting they are. And our last question is, what is the name of the Mexican peninsula where the comet hit that killed the dinosaurs? What is the name of that peninsula? What is the name of the Mexican peninsula where the comet hit that killed the dinosaurs? Any takers? Again, thank you, Anne. Thank you, Brenda. I appreciate that. Let's see if we can get, um, again, someone that hasn't answered one yet, but please keep your hands up. Let's see. Okay, uh, Miss uh, Clement, what do you say is the answer? The Yucatan Peninsula. Ding, ding, ding. Good job, Miss Clement. You got it. The Yucatan you. Peninsula, as you can, it's right here next to Belize, Guatemala. So the southern, very southernmost part, well, not southernmost part, but the southeasternmost part of uh, North America and Mexico. So good job. Thank you so much. Thank you. You all did really well today. I really appreciate uh, your participation. And uh, now we're going to see who wins an iPad accessory today. So again, thank you all so much for your participation. Couldn't hear you. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Can't, can't, can't hear you. Cannot hear you. Can't cannot hear you. Uh, sorry about that, Ann. I my uh, my Zoom and my iPad went out. Uh, what did you say? I said I I was trying to tell you I couldn't hear you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So again, you won a pair of headphones for today. So again, congratulations. Thanks so much. Oh, for... I did. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so again, God. thanks so much for coming on and for answering a question. We really appreciate your participation. Yeah. 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 So uh, again, thank you all so much for attending today's session. I hope you all learned something new um, about Mexico and enjoyed the session. Make sure you check out our 1.30 p.m. on uh, email. So again, congratulations to Anne and I hope you all enjoyed today's session. I will see you all at 1.30 and thanks so much.
Oh, okay. Very interesting to you, Alex. today. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Thank you so much. You